Hello, welcome back to my channel. And today's tutorial, we're going to study the Michaelis Menten equation. Um, so, this is a Michaelis Menten equation. It relates the velocity of enzyme catalyzed reaction to the substrate concentration. Enzymes catalyze biological reactions, so, they increase the rate of the reaction by decreasing the activation energy barrier. Uh, so if we look at the uncatalyzed and catalyzed uh, reactions, the catalyzed reaction has a lower activation energy and the enzyme stabilizes the transition state. So if enzymes do not affect the concentration of reactants or, or products, they increase the reaction rate by making the reaction environment favorable for the reaction to occur. So they decrease the activation energy barrier. As all chemical reactions, enzyme catalyzed reactions have reaction rates. This graph relates the substrate concentration to the velocity of the enzyme catalyzed reaction. In the x-axis, we have the concentration of the substrate in the y-axis, we have the velocity or uh, V0 for the enzyme catalyzed reaction. As we can see uh, at the beginning of the reaction, when time equals zero and when we have very low substrate concentration, the relationship between the substrate concentration and the velocity of the reaction is linear. As we increase the substrate concentration, the velocity of the reaction starts to reach the uh, maximum velocity and the rate of the reaction cannot go any faster and so that is uh, the Vmax for the reaction. So the rate of the reaction or V0 is given by K cat times concentration of enzyme substrate complex and the Vmax is given by K cat times concentration of total enzyme and there is this um, constant known as Km or Michaelis constant. So it refers to the concentration of the substrate that is required to reach 50% of the maximum velocity. So if we look at this graph, uh, this here is a maximum velocity that the enzyme can reach. And this is the initial velocity or the zeros velocity. And therefore 50% of the reaction, the enzyme's maximum velocity will be uh, right here. So if we draw a horizontal line here, we'll get to this coordinate. And then if we draw a vertical line, we'll get to the, uh, we'll get to the substrate concentration, uh, which is a Km as shown here. So uh, the substrate concentration required to reach 50% of uh, the reaction's maximum velocity. The equation for enzyme catalyzed reaction is as given here. When enzyme and substrate react together, they form the enzyme substrate complex and the rate constant for this reaction is given by K1 in the forward reaction. And the enzyme substrate complex can have, uh, it can go in two different directions. So it can go in the forward uh, reaction and it can form the product and plus free enzyme this um, the rate constant for this reaction will be K2. K2 is also known as K cat. Or the enzyme substrate uh, complex could go in the reverse reaction. It could uh, form free enzyme plus substrate, uh, the rate constant of K minus one. So to understand the Michaelis Menten equation, it is an important to understand the steady state assumption. The steady state assumption states that the formation of the enzyme substrate complex is equal to the breakdown of the enzyme substrate complex. Uh, the enzyme substrate complex can be formed when the enzyme and the substrate react together in the forward reaction and then in the rate constant of K1, whereas the enzyme substrate complex can be uh, broken down in two different ways. So one is when the enzyme substrate complex, um, the enzyme catalyzes the reaction to give us the product plus free enzyme. 
and in the rate constant of K2, or uh, when we go in the reverse reaction and we have the free enzyme plus substrate and the uh, rate constant of K minus 1. So if we put all this into an equation, uh, we will have equation 1, where formation of the enzyme substrate complex is equal to the breakdown of enzyme substrate complex. So as we mentioned in the previous slide, the left, um, the left side refer refers to the formation of the ES complex, and the right side refers to the breakdown of the ES complex. And we see that there is two ES in, in here, so we can take it out of the bracket and we get equation 2. And in equation 2, we see that there are two rate constants uh, in the bracket here, k-1 plus k2. And there is also a rate constant uh, at the left of the equation. So what will happen if we rearrange this equation to combine all the rate constants to bring them on one side, we get equation 3. So we have k-1 plus k2 over uh, k1. This actually is the equation for the Michaelis constant Km. So we can uh, equate this to be equal to Km, and we have equation 4. So the concentration of the enzyme in this reaction refers to the concentration of free enzyme. But remember, in the reaction, we have free enzyme plus enzyme uh, complexed with the substrate. So to get the concentration of free enzyme, we can do a total enzyme minus a concentration of enzyme substrate complex, and we get equation 5. And this uh, concentration of substrate will multiply both of the things that are in the bracket, uh, like so and like so, and we get equation 6. And then if we cancel the enzyme substrate complex, uh, we get equation 7. And then also remember from the previous slides, we mentioned that the maximum velocity for the uh, reaction is given by K2 or K cap times concentration of the total enzyme. So what we can do is that uh, in equation 7, we have total enzyme. And in here also, we have total enzyme. Uh, so we can replace the total enzyme by Vmax over K2, and we get equation 8. And we also mentioned that the velocity of the reaction is given by K2 or K cap times concentration of enzyme substrate. Um, so we also see this in equation 8, the denominator of equation 8, right here. So we can replace the K2 times concentration of enzyme substrate by V0, and uh, that is how we got equation 9. Now what we want to do is that we, can, uh, we want to rearrange this equation uh, to get an expression for V0 or the reaction's velocity. And then well, we, what we can do is that we can bring this to the left side of the equation, and we get equation 10. And then when we simplify this equation, we get equation 11, which is the michaelis menten equation. Now that we have the michaelis menten equation, we can apply this equation to interpret the graph we saw earlier using three different scenarios. Scenario one is when we have the substrate concentration smaller than the Km. So this is at the beginning of the reaction when we have very low substrate concentration, almost zero. So if we uh, use the michaelis menten equation and if we replace zero at the denominator for the substrate concentration, we get the following expression. So V0 is equal to Vmax over Km times concentration of the substrate. So these are constants. Uh, so V0 is linearly proportional to the substrate concentration at the beginning of the reaction as shown here. So as we increase the concentration of the substrate, the enzyme will catalyze the reaction uh, linearly. So the velocity of the reaction will be uh, proportional to the 
the substrate concentration. Scenario two is when we have the substrate concentration is equal to the Km. Remember that Km or Michaels constant is equal to the substrate concentration required to reach 50% of the, the maximal velocity. So using the uh, michaels menten equation, we can substitute um, the substrate concentration in the place of Km since they are equal. And if we cancel the substrate concentrations here, what we get is that V0 is equal to Vmax over 2. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, that is true because when the substrate concentration is equal to the Km, we will uh, have 50% of uh, the enzyme's maximal uh, reaction velocity. Uh, so that is uh, Km in the x-axis, and then we have the Vmax over 2 in the y-axis here. And scenario 3 is when concentration of substrate is very high, so it is bigger than the Km. Using the michaels menten equation, we can put a 0 in the place of Km because Km is very, very, very low compared to the substrate concentration, so it is almost negligible. That is why we put a 0 here. When we simplify this, we get V0 equals Vmax, and this makes sense because as we increase the substrate's concentration in the x-axis, in the y-axis, we will reach the Vmax, this horizontal line, and the reaction's velocity cannot go any further than the Vmax. So that is why when we increase the substrate concentration, uh, we will reach the Vmax and the rate of the reaction or V0 will be equal to the Vmax. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and write me if you have any comments. Don't forget to like this video and stay tuned for more biochemistry videos. And I will see you in my next video.